about you. <laughs> I'm very popular, as you can see. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the devil. Surprised? Disappointed? I suppose you imagine you've two little horns on my forehead. A pale face, with eyebrows raised at both ends. Perhaps a charming little moustache or even a funny little tail. No. That's an old-fashioned theory. Time progresses. I never show my face. Well, you mean that you're looking at me now? Well, for this special occasion, I borrowed an actor's face. Rather a good one, in my opinion. But I, I mean I personally, appear only in your thoughts, as a little germ inside your brain, infiltrating your ideas, whispering into your ears, getting into your blood, penetrating. Would you like to see how I operate? Well, this is just an ordinary, simple little story. I'll show you. May I invite you into my private projection room? Are you ready, Lucifer? All right, let's go. Understand? Ah, look who's here, Ray Brighton. This is a surprise. Hi, Jackie. How are things? Fine, just fine. How's your brother? Well, I had an accident. Fell off the hay wagon. Broke two ribs. But he's all right now. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Say, can you fix me something for breakfast? I got up early and had no time. Sure, sure. what'll it be? Lenny. Oh, anything. Usual thing will do. Lenny. Now what do you want? Oh. Nelly. Oh, that's... What's the difference? I didn't listen. Maybe with one ear. What do they say? Oh, the same old stuff. I've heard it before. Change your mind? Want to quit? It's too late now. I'm all packed. Papers are signed. I'm ready to make a fool of myself. You don't look like a lunatic to me. So it's that what they said about me. Take it easy. You better find your lost gold mine. That'll teach him a lesson. It's bet I will. Pockets of gold. Morons. What they say about my partner that I killed him, huh? Ah, oh, forget it. Drink your beer. <laughs> hey, is this the right road? <laughs> the only one there is. Or are we going to get our supplies again? Uh, Holy place. It's the last post before we start climbing. You get everything there. Hi, Holy. Back again. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I thought April Fool's Day was too much ago. Don't worry. I'll find the mine this time. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, I know. Hey, what's this, another victim? Meet my new partner, Ray Brighton. Uh, hi, boy. <laughs> yeah, you poor fool, you. Uh, how come you're so late this year? 
Ray's a farmer. He has some business to do. Oh. We need gas. Yeah, and you can check the oil, too. Yeah, well, you just go ahead and help yourself. Uh, the gas pump's right outside, and then the oil drums are right next to it. Uh, uh, wait just a minute, Doctor. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Peggy? Peggy? What's the matter? Can't you pick up a hose? Fill it up? I'll help you. Now, you check the water and oil. Peggy thinks we need some service around here. Customers sure do like service. Anything for money, huh? No, oh, look who's talking. What have you been chasing all your life? Gold. That's different. Oh, gold isn't money. No, it's a religion. I sure feel sorry for a nice young fellow like that. All right. We need some groceries here. You're Mr. Marco's new partner. Ray. Ray Brighton's the name. My name is just Peggy. Mr. Marco doesn't like me. So what? Is it that important? Well, I like to please our customers. Maybe you're not his type. They say he's a fool. That proves it. We like her, don't we, Mike? What's his name? Mike. <laughs> I have a cousin named Mike. What kind of a dog is he? Thoroughbred cross between two mongrels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Isn't he beautiful? Oh, what a pair of eyes. Yeah, what a pair of eyes. Cut it out, will you? Oh, this is the sugar, oil, salt, onions. Yeah, how about the bacon? Oh, I'm from out of bacon. I I'm going to order some, though, and I'll fetch it up Sunday. Be a nice trip up there. Yeah, about 10,000. Right. Okay, young fella. I reckon I'm about the only old timer around here that ain't got some kind of a lost mine or other. <laughs> so what? I plan to take my... I was almost finished myself. Well, they say I left him there to die. such places. There must be hundreds of them. Well, the trouble is that all the cabins were built alike. Well, won't the owner mind if we use this one? What owner? There's no owner. Sort of no man's land. Funny. Gee, uh, I'm hungry. Let's see the place. Next spring, you probably gonna walk right to it. I came back. 
But then I found out about the curse, about poison oak. <laughs> I got the rash all over the body. Blisters, burnt like the devil. I was so sick, I had fever, I had to leave. Then I was afraid to return until I turned to a religion. There's no use talking to you, they're right. You're all mixed up. my mind. For weeks now, I'm crawling through all of the holes and caves and, and at least we know a lot of places it ain't. Could you have got your humor? Well, what else can I do? No, I don't mind, but, but what? Oh, well, the folks back home, will, they'll call me a sucker and they'll be right. What else am I? So you think that I invented the whole story, that there was no gold mine, huh? Well, to tell you the truth, Take you out Sunday for dinner and dancing. I'm sorry, but Sunday's the only day I have with my baby. But maybe I could. Oh, wait. Peggy, wait! Be more polite and decent with people instead of praying all the time. I'm praying for you. The Lord may spare you from temptation. I want you. I know this woman. I do my own praying. Don't worry about me. Well, I'm fed up. I didn't know what I was getting into when I signed up with you. What do you mean? You can't leave me alone here. Oh, I can't, can I? Well, then let's pack and get out before it arcs. Oh, no, you, you can't do that. We have an agreement. You want to sit here and wait for a miracle to happen? I've had enough. Oh, that woman, the devil sent her to stir up your blood and make trouble between you and me. Shut up! You better remember where you left your mind. I cook you a good meal. Real Serbian food. Come up, Chichi. Bring me some uh, wood for the fire. Go. I'll outsmart you any time, you.
covered the tunnel before we left. The cabin was somewhere else. When we moved out, the brush took over there. That's why I couldn't figure out that. Doing all right. Okay, take it the old man's downstairs. Let me go, I'll scream. Come on, come on, you know I'm crazy about you. I'll cut your throat. Let me go, I said. Oh, I so what am I, poison? You live here with the old man. I'm warning you, Chuck. I'll kill you. Let me go, I said. Okay, I try to be nice to you. I'll show you, you little wench. Please, go. Bravo. Peggy, you sure know how to take care of yourself. Get out of here. Get out before I lose my temper. Thank you, Mr. Marco. All right. I'm really sorry, Peggy. Can you forgive me? Why, well, I don't understand, Mr. Marco. Oh, for the way I treated you, what I said about you. Why, well, everybody says it. I had so much trouble when I tried to defend myself, so I gave up. I mean, I couldn't afford to lose my job here. Well, they better watch out what they say about you now. It's sure changed, Mr. Marco. I don't understand it. Well, what are you doing here, you old imposter? Get to buy some groceries and file the claim. File the claim? <laughs> Where have I heard that before? Oh, the Steve, I never know. Can I have here's some? Hope you can read it. What the devil? Why haven't you gone? What are you talking about? I'm back already. Honey. What time? I mean... Say, hey, you got it there. That's the way he goes with Walter. Ah, uh, gold. <laughs> No. And don't forget salt and dog food. Right. Here's the money. Say, hey, you old monkey, you, you look like you're going out on a spree. Well, you never know. Balkanese blood keeps fresh and boiling, and I feel arrested. You use it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah, I'll be right 
right there. It's not 8 o'clock yet. Hey, take your time. I just wanted to be sure you didn't fall asleep. I never do, so what are you talking about? Hey, what are you doing in there? I'm cutting my toenails, if you must know. Keeping Tom.
must be noon. I'm hungry. Why don't you go fix us some lunch? I'll handle this thing. Okay. <laughs> Where are you going? Your partner's going to fix lunch. He's hungry. Oh, he is. Huh. Hey, next time let me tell my wife what to do. Okay, then tell her she don't have to work so hard anymore. Very generous of you, but we have a deal 50-50 in work and profit. So that's it. What? Now I can understand why you changed your mind about it. Why you married her. So somebody could hold your end of the work up. Why, that's not marriage. That's just a dirty trick. Hey, why are you so concerned about her? What is it to you? Jealous, maybe? Well, let's not talk about it anymore. You're right, it's none of my business. <laughs> Maybe I ought to take half a day off and go into town when I finish that one spot. Say, you should bring me a few things. Some cleanser, wood polish, and bobby pins and wool. And you can bring me some of those old ten cent magazines for the long evenings around here. The good book never makes the evenings seem long to me. Okay, we'll all sit around and read the Bible. How's that? Boy sure has changed since you came here. Maybe he doesn't want me around here. Maybe it's the other way around. How's that? Maybe he he's in love with you. Mr. Marco, I want to tell you something. Something that's been on my mind for a long time now. Since our marriage ceremony, you've never kissed me. You've never embraced me. And you let me sleep up there on the upper bunk. A woman, I mean a wife, wants to belong. For her own protection, she wants to belong to her man. It gives her security. Don't you understand that? Now look at me. Don't I appeal to you? me unprepared to your speech. I don't know how to explain it, but you see, I'm a man of principles, of religion. After we are through here with the gold digging and we come back to our own. <laughs> I want a peaceful life. Mr. Marco's nice to me. He's the only guy who leaves me alone. That's a nice recommendation for a husband. What is it? I just saw him. He was spying on us. I like to watch him make this. Go ahead, try one. I'll show you how. Uh, why do you smoke those homemade? Because I ran out of the other kind. <laughs> say, that gives me an idea. Why don't we take a couple of days off, go into town? What do you say? What's the matter? Don't you like our company? That's not the point. We're rich now. We, we've got lots of money. 
to buy Christmas presents with. Christmas is just around the corner. No, the past is miles away, miles of deep snow. Things have changed, Marco, since you were snowed in. There's a highway across the pass now. I, a bus passes there twice a day, both ways. It's only about 10 miles, and I can make snowshoes for all three of us. Oh, I wouldn't let Peggy go through such an experience. Why don't you go, Ray? Take a week off, it'll do you good. He'll catch cold. Say, why are you so concerned about him? What's going on here? Well, isn't it important to you that he stays in good health? What a wonderful wife, always thinking of her husband. Cut it out, will you? You don't trust me, say so. Ray, come in here a minute. Tell him. Now listen, you two fellas. I've had enough trouble in the past. I won't let anyone push me around anymore. Mr. Marco here suspects. I know I've got a bad reputation, but it's just because people won't ask questions. They just condemn me. When I married Mr. Marco, I remember what I said. Through thick and through thin, so death do us part. Believe it or not, it meant something to me. He gave me back my self-respect, and he gave my baby a decent name. I'm great. But I won't let anyone interfere. So no monkey business, no flirting, no passes, and no suspicion. Let's keep it decent. And I think I'll fix a little tea. You must be cold, Ray. Pick up the card. Well, I sh <laughs> nice and warm in here. Where should we put the tree? What is it? Why, sick. Oh, no, he's just resting. Oh, Oh, no. You two guys brought me supplies and shopping. Marco, where's the salt? Huh? What did you say? Where's the salt? 
I don't know. I handed it to you. You stuck it there, don't you remember? Well, then we're, we're out of it. You're kidding. Maybe I'm blind, but I, I don't see any fall up here anywhere. I see possibly the way go see you. I think I, I forgot to buy some on my last trip. There was, there was really a good Christmas dinner. Peggy, for this you deserve a medal. Well, I didn't have enough salt. And what could I do? It was all right. Too much salt's unhealthy anyway. But not enough is worse. What are we going to do about it? Oh, let's forget about it. To friendship, health, and wealth. I have a present for you two fellas. Uh, it's uh, sweeter than honey. <laughs> what do you have to keep talking about? I know it's my fault. I remember I had it on the list. But I've forgotten it all this marrying business. Well, I tell you what I do. I make a pair of snowshoes. The weather is nice. I know my way. I'll go into town and buy some salt. That's a crazy idea, Mr. Marco. You can't do that. You mean I'm too old? Well, no. Why don't you go, then? No, oh, no, I wouldn't let him go. Why should he pay for my mistakes? No, no, no. It's no danger. The weather is nice. The sky's clear. The snow is quite soft. I think I'll even enjoy the trip. <laughs> but what's the difference? I'll What is it? Why do you look so perplexed? You must be joking. You don't really mean to. To leave you here alone? Why not? Can't I trust you? Didn't you ask me to trust you? What better proof can I give you? Why don't you both go? It would be easier that way. To leave you here alone, a woman? Nobody would steal me. Now, let's not talk about it. I made up my mind. Oh, wait, what, what do I need? I need a willow, deer hide strips. You can help me, Ray. I'll show you how. I know how. That's not the point. Can't you see you're upsetting Peggy? I don't know why. I leave tomorrow, next day I'm back. Is that so bad? You're the boss, Mr. Marco. You must know what you're doing. Is it threat? If you're so smart, answer for yourself. Why are you two so jumpy? Don't you trust yourselves? Marco, either you're too smart or you're too stupid. Why should you trust me? All right, I don't trust you, so I trust my wife. How's that? What kind of a wife is she, anyhow? She sleeps right between us. Now, listen, you... Oh, I see what you mean. It's none of your business, anyway. Fascinating how you make those cigarettes. Go ahead, try it. Now, bend it with these two fingers. I'll go with one hand, take it to the back. I'll spread it. Even, not too much. Now, I'll press it against the paper. Lightly, not too hard. But so tricky. I'll roll it back and forth. On the paper, not, not the tobacco. No, here, let me show you. Now, what? More and more, it won't stick together. Oh, 
shouldn't have done that. No, but I couldn't help it. I'll take this torch. Maybe I ought to pack my things and go away. Maybe you should. Maybe I could go away if you only knew. There's nothing else for us to do but to try to forget it. Winter's over. Go back to my Did you fall asleep? No, I'm coming down. Frozen up, I can't see a thing. and I blisters on my feet, so I... <laughs> sure, sure. Only you didn't have to go into town to get any salt. There's a whole sack of it up there. 
Enough for three months. But you preferred to hide it. So you'd have an excuse to go off and leave us here alone together. Why, you planned this night from the moment you first brought your wife up here. What are you talking Shut about? Shut up! You planned to kill me. To get rid of the 50-50 partner. You felt sorry suddenly about giving away part of your gold. So you figured out how to do it. Quite clever, I must say. You married Peggy, a, a bad girl in your mind. You brought her out here so we could fall in love. You used all kinds of tricks to arouse our affections. Why, you even played jealous. Forced us to dance, to kiss, to get ideas into our heads, to excite us. And then you pretended to go into town. Only you hung around outside the house and spied on us, hoping to catch us cheating on you so you could shoot to kill. jury would convict you, the poor, cheated husband. Yes, pray, you old hypocrite. Ask the devil to forgive you. Nobody else would listen to your prayers. You stopped at nothing. He even killed my little dog so he wouldn't give you away while you were spying on us outside. Please, stop it! Stop it! Please, don't! I'd like to kill me. Let's get out of here. Here's your share. I split the gold three ways. Goodbye, Mr. Marco. I'll leave my addresses fully for legal formality. Great, look at that cloud. Yeah, it looks like a storm. Do you think it's safe to go? It all depends on which way the wind will blow. Go back. 
Thank <laughs> you. 